I had had my chain aware of all of this from the beginning. I take back any support I ever gave. It makes me so mad. I was actually nice. I love Trisha so much. Rylan's a weasel. He lied. Jeffrey had told me it's okay for us to do it. Jeffrey's just a bad person, but he'll always, he'll keep winning in life. Jeffree Star's hairdresser called out Trisha Paytas on Instagram Live, and Trisha didn't hold back with her response. Before I get into the tea, I just want to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Hair by Jay, Trisha Paytas, Jeffree Star, Jane Dawson, Rylan Adams, Ethan Klein, or anyone else involved in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news. On January 5th, hairdresser Hair by Jay went on a long rant about Trisha Paytas on Instagram Live. He started to mock her appearance using aggressive language. In order to understand what's happening now, we need to go back in time. On December 31st, 2020, Trisha uploaded a mukbang video titled Arby's Jamocha Shake and Mozzarella Sticks. In the video, she spoke about a trip she took with Jeffree Star to Las Vegas in February 2020, where she said she was treated poorly. She said her drama with Jeffree hurt because they were truly just friends, not business partners or collaborators. She said she received a message from someone familiar with the trip telling her about nasty things Jeffree and others said about her behind her back during the trip. She claimed Jeffree and others talked poorly about her skin and weight, among other things. It really, really hurt because I did not think he was like that. But before she found out about the nasty remarks, Trisha said she felt uncomfortable. It was just mean girl energy on that trip. A lot. And they often ditched me for dinner. I was left behind. He called me one night at like 5 a.m. to go downstairs to the casino and he was there. And I went down and tried to call him and he didn't answer. And it just was like, I don't know. It just really, really upset me. She claimed Jeffrey had given her a gift, but when she decided to not go out with them, she said he re-gifted it to Rich Lux. She also spoke about an incident with Jeffree Star's wig specialist, Hair by Jay, although she didn't name him in her video. Trisha claimed he overcharged her for her wig. The wig guy, Jeffrey's wig guy that I've used a couple times prior, charged me double, wouldn't, do, like, wouldn't help me with my wig at the, at the end of the night even though he was charging me so much. She said she asked him for the price before the trip so she could make sure she had the money ready, but she claimed he never told her. When she decided to leave early because of how uncomfortable she was on the trip, she claimed the wig specialist invoiced Trisha for double what she would normally be charged. It was on a Sunday, I came back, and he was hounding me for this money. One, it was a Sunday, I couldn't get the funds. Two, I had to transfer from some different account. And three, at the time, I still wasn't, like, February of 2020, I still wasn't balling. I just didn't have it right away. And I was like, you have to give me a couple days. Like, this is why I asked you like a week prior, I think like a week and a half prior, 10 days prior, how much it was gonna cost. Cause I don't wanna be that person that doesn't have the money for you when it's time to pay. She said she estimated the cost to be what he charged her when he worked with her in the past on a music video. And she said the amount he did charge her for the Las Vegas trip was more than what she had been charged for the music video. She said Jeffrey had reached out to her multiple times, but she said something didn't feel right about the trip. Fast forward to January 5th, 2021. Jay went on Instagram Live to speak about his experiences with Trisha on the Las Vegas trip. He said he had a good experience when he worked with her in the past and he was a fan of her music. He started reacting to Trisha's mukbang video and repeatedly stopped playing the video to mock her appearance using aggressive language. Jay addressed Trisha's claim that he overcharged her for the Las Vegas trip. She says that I charged her more the second time for two wigs in an installment than I did the first time that I ever did her hair. Have in mind, the first time I did three wigs, okay? So there's no possible way that I charged her more the second time than the first time. He explained his pricing, saying he charged her $1,500 for each wig, and she bought three wigs for her music video. During this portion of the video, he also showed her company name in a screenshot, showing she paid him $4,500. He also said he charged her a discounted day fee for the music video in addition to the cost of the wigs. He shared his iPhone screen on Instagram Live, sharing his conversation with Trisha from the time of the Las Vegas trip. For context, installment refers to Jay properly fitting the wigs on Trisha's head. He later clarified that Jeffrey ended up not paying for the installment and the extra thousand dollars came from the two separate installments, which he said cost $500 each. So each wig cost $1,500, and Jay's fee to install the wigs came to $500 for each wig. 
Together, that comes to $4,000. However, Jay's screenshot shows Jay told Trisha that Jeffrey was covering the installment fees, even though he wasn't. So it's easy to see how Trisha thought she was being overcharged when she thought she was just paying for the wigs. Back to the conversation. Jay reacted to his own message with a question mark, then sent a follow-up message asking for a response from Trisha. She replied, I will, but babe, it's Sunday. I just got home and my accountant needs to do the transfer. I DM'd you a week ago asking for the amount so I could have time to have my biz manager transfer money into the account. She sent a screenshot of the DM conversation showing she had asked him about the money prior to the trip. Jay then scrolled down, showing more messages where Trisha said she already sent it, then said, babe, I haven't sent it, I just told you. Unclear whether Trisha is referring to sending Jay the money directly or sending the request for the money transfer to her business manager. Jay scrolled down and showed another message from Trisha. He then showed messages he sent two days later, on Wednesday, showing himself following up with Trisha and asking for her to send him the money. Then, on Thursday, Trisha sent a screenshot of the payment to Jay. Jay said he actually likes spending time with Trisha. How did I charge you more if I was actually the one that liked you? I sat next to you at the concert. I walked beside you, sat next to you, took pictures of you. I was the one that took the pictures. I edited them for you. He then explained the cost of the wigs and the discounts he gave her. How was, I'm, 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 I'm trying to process that. She clearly says in the video, that she paid way more the second time for two wigs than she did the first time when in the first time she paid $4,500 right for three wigs and a, a day fee of $3,000 which that's not my day fee but I gave her a discount and the only reason it ended up to $3,000 because I charged her $500 more for and um, staying two hours more he said people take advantage of Jeffrey. And I know, normally don't like to speak up on nobody. Mm -hmm. They're f***ing lucky that Jeffrey's actually a nice person. Yeah. They're taking advantage yeah. that Jeffrey's not about airing people out anymore, okay? Oh, that he's not work. about airing people out yeah. anymore. Jay also criticized Trisha for speaking badly about Jeffrey when he paid for most of the Las Vegas trip. He's lucky he's a nice person. How are you gonna talk about a person after you got in a private jet that was paid for, you didn't spend a dime, okay? Your room was paid for. He paid for the concert to go see Mariah Carey, front row, I sat next to you. Paid for the food for the restaurant. Jay called Trisha boring and said she brought a negative attitude when they were trying to make her feel better. And you're right, you were such a boring time. You were such a boring time, you were so negative. I remember he even checked her like, yo, what is wrong with you, girl? We're trying to make you feel better. Because she was like, um, we were like, hey, we have to leave by 9 o'clock. It's 7 o'clock. Like, I'll put Trisha's wig first and then I'll put your... Oh, no, no, no. If we don't have time for mine, I literally will go out like this. I don't care. Like, you know, I'm good. I'm, I'm perfectly fine. Like, da, da, da. She had a ball cap on. He's so lucky he does not air this out. Jay also complained that Trisha sat during a concert they saw because her feet hurt. You were so out of it out of it she wore a boring time she sat down through the whole concert she sat down because her feet supposedly her feet first of all she didn't know mariah carey is because the only person she knows is britney spears and christina galera she, she sat down through the whole concert because her feet because she couldn't stand you get me he then mocked trisha for her mental health struggles oh my god i wanted to come in so so many times. <laughs> Jay questioned why Trisha had Jeffrey as a guest on her podcast, The Dish with Trish, in June 2020, a few months after the incident in Las Vegas. If a person is so <sighs> negative to you, right? This was on f***ing February of 2020. Why did you have this person come to your podcast a couple of months later? But this person's so bad to you. You had a horrible time with us. He said Trisha should have confronted Jay on her podcast. I wish the people would talk about and explain and talk about how much a person was so made her feel uncomfortable, was so negative to her. But afterwards, don't forget to say, but I got to fly to Vegas because that person paid for a fucking jet. I slept in the motherfucking room because that person paid for my fucking suite. I went to go see Mariah Carey first um, row because that person paid for my ticket.
to go see her. He paid for the car services, okay? I got to get the f out of my f***ing house for once because a person actually invited me somewhere and made me feel like I have f***ing friends. Okay. Jay said Trisha only focused on the bad and said she gossiped because she was insecure. Why do people like to talk about the negative about a person but they forget to say all the like good things? Shit. Because you're, fucking, you're so fucking insecure, your fucking dignity, your pride, your fucking shit is dragging towards the fucking ground. But that's because you put yourself in that position because you made a whole fucking career out of talking about people. Why to make yourself feel, feel, feel good? He questioned why Trisha waited nearly a year before talking about what happened and said he thought about suing her. You're talking about a person and about people a whole year later after an event happened. First of all, I should sue you because when you go to in court, right, and you wait a whole year later to sue the person, guess the what? The court looks at you like, why did you wait nine, 12 months to say something? He used aggressive and hurtful language to criticize and mock Trisha throughout the video, and repeated many of the same points. At the end of the video, he called Trisha but got no answer. He appeared to briefly flash her phone number to the camera, but it's difficult to see the actual number on the phone screen. On January 15th, 10 days after Hair by Jay did his Instagram Live, Trisha uploaded a video titled, Why I'm Scared of Jeffrey and Hair by Jay. She started the video by playing parts of Jay's Instagram Live. Trisha is filming her screen and can be heard crying as she records his comments. She said watching the video was triggering for her. I think watching this is so triggering for so many reasons. Like I'm actually shaking as one. <laughs> I did it three so times, which made me end up in a mental hospital. Trisha said it was hard for her to see her friends glorify someone who caused her harm. I see the comments. <laughs> like Ryland boasting him up, boasting how great Jeffrey is and everything. He's an actual monster. She said she didn't speak out sooner because there were more serious accusations against Jeffrey. Trisha also said she never said she owned her house and listed some of the things Jeffrey and his crew did to her during the Las Vegas trip. But it's just like insane to me. Insane to me that people... Because he goes on in the video to say like, the house I live in now is rented. I never said I owned it. Which, you know, that's their that was their mean girl stuff that I couldn't afford stuff that they threw my Balenciaga in the trash that they gave away and begged to Rich Lux that they wouldn't give me my camera. Like, there were so many worse things going on. And he's like, you were a boring time and all this sh just because I didn't want to go out. He doesn't show the DMs. I said prior asking how much the freaking wings are to go into this. is like so, it's so triggering. It's so triggering. She clarified that she was grateful for the trip. I want to say also for the record, like I was thankful and grateful that he invited me. I was like excited until I wasn't excited anymore, which is why I went home. I offered to pay his assistant money for the hotel room. I had no interest in seeing Mariah Carey. They didn't even get us tickets. They got me and Jay tickets last minute because they're like, oh, come, which was nice. But I didn't want any of it. I didn't ask for any of it. And I offered to pay for the room. I offered to put money towards the jet. I did all this. Trisha called Jeffrey out for using his money to push people around. The fact that, that that's what like Jeffrey has to hold over people is like I paid for all this sh stuff like that is so d disgusting and gross to me. And then the fact that like all of this I already knew from like reaching for a nacho and Jeffrey slapping my hand and saying don't eat and like just constantly like if I ask for like the price like oh why are you asking for prices like it's just insane to me. It's insane to me that there's people like this. She said she didn't want to speak against a friend of Shane's and she was too scared to come forward sooner. I was scared. I was scared because I know everyone who goes against Jeffrey, like, it's, like, canceled, like, you know, all this stuff like that. And, like, Jay, and like, admits, like, he beat people's and I'm not, you know, I was, like, alone. I was single for a long time and lived alone, and, like, I was, I was scared. Trisha said she told Shane and Ryland what happened when she got back. I was, like, trauma- I was traumatized. Like, the, when, right when I came home, I, like, had to tell him, and I just- and he just wanted to see him by him, but I'm just- and I was just scared that I would lose, like, Shane's friendship because they were- they were gonna get married, like, a month later after that trip, and I knew he'd probably invite Jeffrey, and I just didn't want to make it awkward, and so I just was trying to not say anything. She claimed her company was hacked because Jay showed her company name in his Instagram Live. He's showing like my company name and stuff like that, which has now been breached. I had a hack system in my business account. I really didn't understand what was going on with it. 
and I didn't even realize that until I'm seeing all this, like, that he's showing my company name that's not out there. <laughs> she also said Jay did charge her more than he did when they worked together previously. And he did charge me more. It's $1,500 a wig. He charged me $4,000. He didn't, he didn't take off my wig. He told me to go get rubbing alcohol down, like, the hall that he was too busy to do it. He wasn't even doing it. It just is so stupid, but, like, on all this, it's like, I'm supposed to not, I'm supposed to not have an opinion. You guys can talk to all this sh** on me. All this sh** on me. Trisha explained what happened when she told Jay she didn't need her wig done. I even specifically said to him that, like, if we don't have time to do my wig, it's fine. He mentions it in this thing. I said, it's fine. Because, like, he had told me Jeffrey was paying for the installment. And, like, again, I didn't expect any of this. I offered to pay towards the private jet. I offered to pay towards the hotel. Like, I offered to pay towards everything. I didn't ask him to brush my hair or whatever like that. Me and him got tickets last minute. I didn't even ask for the wigs. I didn't. Like, I, I even went as far to be like, it's fine, you don't have to install mine, I'll go out like this. And he's like making fun of me because I wanted to go out with just my regular hair because I just thought we were running late. That was Jeffrey's glam team. Like, I just, I don't care. You guys have seen me on vacation, I just don't care. She said Jeffrey tried to contact her numerous times, but she wasn't ready to talk with him. She also said anyone who supported Jeffrey was awful because she said Jeffrey is an awful person. Trisha said while she wasn't perfect, she wasn't nasty to people like Jeffrey was. She clarified she was unsatisfied with Jay's service. I did have an issue with him charging me $1,000 more than wigs normally cost. And I was just out of nowhere when I asked him days and days prior, like how much and that was my issue. And it made me feel kind of some type of way that he only charged me when I got back from the trip and not beforehand. Like he always did. And I always paid him up front. He shows her, I like, can't even watch this anymore. She said that despite Jay claiming Jeffrey paid for her meals, they would often ditch her before dinner. She said she was scared because Jay had doxxed her phone number and company name and was aggressive in his Instagram Live. Trisha also clarified she didn't lie in her original mukbang video. She said she had asked how much she owed Jay well in advance of the trip, and he told her Jeffrey was taking care of it. When I like left on my own and not with them, um, that's when he built me, like, after. So I didn't lie about it. Um, it really was overcharged, and he, like, he even shows the DM. He's like, Jeffrey, take care of the installment and did it. Trisha said he admitted she paid him the full amount he asked for. And I asked him, and I asked him, and I was like, hey, like, how much do I owe you? And he, like, wasn't giving me anything back. And he's like, Jeffrey's taking care of it. And again, I don't expect him to take care of anything. I don't. But it was just, like, when I came back, all of a sudden he hits me with this. And, like, hey, are you going to pay this? Are you going to pay this? And it was a Sunday. The next day was a, a holiday. And I do. I do transfer money from my accounts. Like, it's not that I'm baller. It's or it, whatever. It's just, like, I have a financial one. I have a personal one. A business one. And, and I just, like, wanted to say, like, that's the root of all this. is Because I read a comment that's like, well, it's because she, like, lied. And it's like, I, I didn't lie about any of that. She ended the video by saying Jay admitted he and Jeffrey spoke poorly about Trisha on the trip, and she accused Jeffrey of bringing her on the trip to make fun of her behind her back. After Trisha uploaded her video, she posted several TikToks addressing the situation and replying to comments. In one TikTok, Trisha shared a screenshot of her text message conversation with her security guard, who said he thought Jay was at Trisha's house taking pictures of her cars. In another video, she said she was scared of him and said she would be doubling her security in response to the threats. In a video reply to a TikTok comment, Trisha reiterated that she did not use his name in her initial mukbang video and that she was kind to him and paid him the price he asked for his services. In another video reply, Trisha said she tried to give Jeffrey the benefit of the doubt because Shane Dawson and his fiance Ryland Adams were still friends with him, but she said she can't support his behavior anymore. In another video reply, Trisha clarified that she can only call the police and report him for harassment if he shows up at her house again. In another video reply, Trisha showed clips from Jeffrey's recent videos showing Hair by Jay traveling with Jeffrey in Wyoming, proving he has a current relationship with Jeffrey, and implying that this relationship meant Jay represented Jeffrey in the Instagram Live. She also spoke about Shane in another video reply. I had had made Shane aware of all of this from the beginning, from the minute it happened. And I am not that person to say, like, don't be friends with someone, but it's just like the constant promoting of Jeffrey and just how awful and evil he is. Like, it just really, it really makes me sick to my stomach. And I literally just can't take it anymore. I just can't take it anymore. And I didn't want to be that person to also be like, he did this, this, and this to me. And because to me, it's just mean girl stuff. It's just him being mean and awful. And, but this is taking it to another level and I don't support it. And I'm saying that now I don't support it. I don't support this. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm just scared. I'm just really scared right now. In a later TikTok, Trisha said Jeffrey may not have known Jay would go off on Instagram Live, but she said that didn't take away from the bad experience she had with him and his glam squad on the trip to Las Vegas.
Trisha also called into the H3 After Dark show to discuss the situation after Ethan and Ella Klein reacted to parts of Hair by Jay's Instagram Live. She repeated many of the statements she had already made in her video and TikTok. As people reacted to Trisha's video, some fans started asking Jeffrey for his take on what was going down. One person wrote, If you support what was said to Trisha Paytas in that video, you are trash. I don't care what kind of money you have. That is mean girl behavior. You need to apologize and fire Hair by Jay. Jeffrey quote tweeted them and replied, I have personally apologized to Trisha Paytas several times last year about Vegas and she never responded, which is her right. I respected it and what happened is between us. Don't drag me into new drama. Not in interested. What someone else says does not represent me. Jeffrey later deleted this tweet. Another person said, Imagine if we didn't have social media and no one would know what others did or thought. Jeffrey wrote, Exactly. I've already said my piece to her, and if she ever wants to call or text me back, she will. What Jay said on live was disgusting and does not reflect how I've ever felt. I shouldn't have to say that, but I'm screaming it. Someone else called Jeffrey out for working with Hair by Jay in the first place. Why would you want that little working for you. You're a professional business owner. Don't have people like that in your life. What he said was so incredibly mean and wrong. He's a little bully, and you're better than that. Jeffrey clapped back, I've been in Wyoming and had no idea what was going on. Just catching up now, and I'm horrified by what he said. Let's not pretend I had any part in that. Trisha quote tweeted Jeffrey's first tweet addressing her and replied, If you didn't want to be involved in the drama, why is he speaking your name in the video on your behalf, confirming all the horrid you guys said about me. I have been cool, but he is speaking on your behalf multiple times in all his feeds. Jeffrey responded, You've ignored all my messages and texts for months, yet want to have an internet circus with an audience? No thank you. Love you girl. You can call or text me anytime. Jeffrey also deleted this tweet. In a TikTok, Trisha said she was paranoid about Jeffrey and potentially other friends being involved with the th hair by Jay made, and she was relieved to hear Jeffrey did not support him. Many people had strong feelings about the situation. Some people said Hair by Jay was showing his true colors. Trish, don't cry over a clown. He's on live showing his true colors, and it's obvious he's not a good person. In all seriousness, the word bully doesn't even cut it. It's just pure evil and psychotic. Jeffree Star only has friends because of his status and money. Let's be real. Others said Hair by Jay was being aggressive. Why does he talk like that? Aggressive as hell for what? LMAO, he's embarrassing to watch. That's not mean girl. These are grown men bullying a woman. Did he say disfigured? What the f This is terrible. This man threatened you online saying, after I'm done with you, you're going to look anorexic. That's psycho. It's not cute. No one gets to treat people like sh because they paid for the trip. You don't get to buy people sh and then expect them to allow you to be brutal to them. A few people pointed out that Jay contradicted himself. Jay, I actually liked her. I made fun of her skin, hair, weight, and wealth so much that she left the trip because of it, but I actually liked her. The way Jay was just exposing Trisha for being down to earth and accommodating. She said she's fine to go out without getting her hair done. Like, is that supposed to be a bad thing? Many people supported Trisha. Literally never heard of this man until now. Honey, look at your ring. Look at your fiance. Look at your current life. You're better than any of them. They sold themselves. You're better than all of them. They're petty pieces of garbage. I'm so happy you have more authentic people like Ethan, Moses, and Ela in your life now, because all these other people are trash. I don't understand how anyone could go online and publicly say those horrid things and think everyone would go, Yes, work mama, you slay her, lol. Talk about deranged. You don't deserve this, Trish, and you're 100 times better than he'll ever be. Others were worried about Trisha's safety. Trish, I'm concerned. He looks unstable. Please protect yourself. I don't want to seem dramatic, but the look of genuine hatred in his eyes really concerns me. Get a restraining order. He seems like he would hit a woman. I feel like you could probably press charges on him. Honestly, this is disturbing. This isn't just drama, this is hatred. Report his IG. He was bullying and making fun of this girl's thoughts and weight. He should be shut down and not able to do like that. Real talk, don't go anywhere with any of them. The hate in his eyes is alarming, and I would honestly fear for your safety if you were with them. This stretches beyond mean girl behavior. One person noticed the comments on Jay's live. Everyone is missing on how gross and awful the people on the chat were laughing and supporting that man's verbal and toxic behavior. And some people noticed how Trisha was trying to be mindful of Shane and Ryland. Throughout this whole video, Trisha's talking about why she was trying to keep Shane and Ryland's feelings in mind, and they've done jack 
for her. Trish, you're worth so much more. I understand not wanting to lose a friend, but honestly, is it really worth it to keep a friendship with people who are fine to stand by and let you get bullied, especially when they work so hard to promote Jeffrey's public image? Shane and Ryland at this point are just complicit in Jeffrey having any credibility so we can continue to get away with this behavior. That's not friendship. Shane and Ryland are not your friends, Trisha, or else they wouldn't be friends with such people. You have a real friend in Ethan. You are engaged to a good man. Time to drop all of these people and find happiness. Ethan just talked about the situation on live. He's defending her. He has her back. Where the f*** is Shane? 10 years of friendship and he's still friends with Jeffrey after she told him this? Nah. Some people noticed Shane, Ryland, and Trisha had unfollowed each other on Instagram, but Trisha later clarified she had blocked both of them on social media. Shane and Ryland didn't unfollow me, just to set the record straight. I blocked them. There's no malice behind it. I did it for my own peace. It's not drama. It's a very personal, and I want to move on. So speculation can stop as to why they unfollowed. They didn't. Then, on January 16th, Jay went live on Instagram to apologize to Trisha. He said he never had a problem with Trisha. I repeat. I've never had a problem with Trisha Paytas. I actually thought me and her were on good terms. I thought me and her were uh, cordial, not friends, because we do not hang out. But at some point, I thought we were good because we had worked multiple, uh, like three times prior to this event that we that's blown blown up. He said he never spoke badly about her when she was within earshot. Never did she hear me. Uh, say anything negative about her, post anything negative about her, write anything negative about her, till the live. Jay said he still didn't have a problem with Trisha. Never did I have a problem with the girl. And to this day, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't feel she needs to feel threatened. I don't feel that she needs to feel like her, um, Oh, her life is in danger. He said he often stayed at home and rarely left his house, especially during the pandemic. Jay said he reacted the way he did because he felt Trisha's version of events was not entirely accurate. I definitely just reacted the way that I, that anybody I feel felt would have re uh, reacted to something that they felt was in 100% accurate. Am I saying she lied? No. Am I saying that that was my side of the story? The way that I uh, addressed myself towards her was not appropriate. I'm a grown adult. Nobody should be talked to like that. And I maybe should have just ignored it because it's a situation that happened a year ago. He apologized to Trisha. I do apologize for what I said about Trisha Paytas. Um, the way that I came at her was absolutely aggressive. It was not something that, you know, to me, someone coming at me like that, growing up the way that I grew up and stuff like that, it's, you know, it's, it's not normal, but it's seen. I know she has never seen it. I will never cause any harm to anything. She's never done anything um, um, to me personally. He also said he hadn't seen Trisha in a year. On the same day, Trisha uploaded a video titled, I just want to move on. She said she wanted to make the video because she wanted to keep working and didn't want to dwell on the drama. However, she said she wanted to address what happened before moving on because it still affected her. I don't want to continue doing it without addressing this because I don't want it to be like I'm just moving on and everything's okay because I'm so tired of everyone just being like, everything's fine, get over it all this stuff because the truth is is i'm not over it it's why i still talk about it a year later it was one of the most traumatizing things ever like the mean girl behavior and again i didn't say anything for so long because like i knew shane's was friends with jeffrey and shane would call me and be like don't make a video it'll make things worse like and now like looking back i see like he had told me originally that he also was scared of jeffrey it was slowly distancing himself from him and then i see him on the sip rylan's podcast not once but twice as recent as last week then just gushing over him and praising him when jeffrey star in my opinion is a really nasty vile person she claimed jeffrey had been telling people she was on behind her back but she said she wasn't on i was never on when i came back i was not on that is so messed up to me and so evil and what's so evil is that he's doing this like behind closed doors and like telling people and like planting seeds He's like this cult leader. She said two people had either come forward or told her directly about the stuff Jeffrey was saying behind her back, but she didn't say anything because of Shane. And I was biting my tongue because Shane was like saying, like, 
oh even up up until the last time i saw she and he's like oh yeah jeffrey's just really lonely and no friend jeffrey's evil up until this last freaking tweet he sent me of jeffrey saying um love you like going back and forth and then just ending it with like you have my number i'm not doing this internet charade love you girl so condescending for for being traumatized. Trisha said that while she believed Shane had changed from the behaviors that got him canceled last year, she wouldn't support him anymore. She said Shane told her he was scared of Jeffrey too. Even today, I was so beyond having him on the podcast and stuff and telling me one thing, being like, I'm scared of him too. I gotta slowly, like, I gotta slowly distance myself, but like, don't make a video, like all that stuff to like praising him on the podcast. To today, switching to and like, well, he was the only one loyal to me, so I clung to him. Like, That's two different things you're telling me. And then on top of it, today, writing me a whole long thing in here if you want to talk, but also if you just want to come over, Postmates and like, like, let's just forget the whole thing. Forget the whole thing. This is something that traumatized me for a full year, and she and Rylan knew about it two days after this happened. She said the final straw for ending her friendship with Shane was when he told her he didn't want to believe her accusations were true. But what really triggered me more than anything today, and it's why I will no longer support Shane, and I stand by it, and it's the hardest, it's, it's the hardest pill to swallow, is because we have been friends for over 12 years. And in no, and he told me today, Oh, I guess I should. I just wanted to believe the stuff you said about that Jeffrey said about you wasn't true. And like, I was shaking and traumatized by it. I was, I was like smacking food out of my hand, calling me like, like saying I'm poor and all this stuff. It's like so triggering. Trisha said the least Shane and Rylan could do was take down the podcast episode with Jeffrey and unfollow Jay on social media. She compared Jeffrey to a cult leader. It's like, you're the cult leader and, and all your, your followers committed the crime, but you don't actually do it. So you don't, your hands are clean and you know, you talk. This is, it proved my point. Jay confirmed it. I mean, it, 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 J Jeffrey confirmed it by saying, I already apologized. She said Jeffrey used Shane to redeem his reputation and Shane used Jeffrey to make money. Jeffrey used Shane for that. And maybe Shane used Jeffrey too, to make a palette, make a bunch of money. And clearly they sold they like to me it's like selling yourself to stuff to the devil the podcast of having jeffrey on there to talk about kanye and stuff like that that to me is just the root of all evil like you sold your soul to the devil you sold out you put you you don't care how vile how vile someone is as long as it's as long as as long as you can get those views and cash in trisha said she always believed what shane told her and claimed he never stood up for her publicly I have never once questioned anything Shane told me to be the truth. Like I, I never have when it comes to anything from like a people being nasty. And I've heard for years, for years, Shane saying stuff behind me back and I like did not want to believe it. But now I'm seeing it. I don't like, you know what? He's never, he's never publicly stood up for me. That's fine. I get it. I'm, I'm problematic, but you're going to publicly promote and, and share Jeffrey who's, who's vile, who's been vile to me, your supposed best friend and act like he's just what for money for the palette for business to keep going it's so unbelievably disgusting she also addressed jay's apology i saw a hair by jay's apology and honestly i was shocked by it and i'm like like i'm thankful for it i don't like it shows the kind of person he is and honestly any client should think twice before booking with him he showed my phone number on live he gave my phone number to his friend that was braiding his hair like he docks my business like he's shady as I was, I'm glad he apologized. And again, like I didn't have beef with him other than like, yes, I asked him many, many days prior, a week prior, weeks prior, how much they hate words being, never gave me a cost, nothing until I got back home. And then all of a sudden he includes the installment in the own text. He's saying, oh, Jeffrey's covering the installment. And then he's like, then he charges me it anyways. Like it, it doesn't make sense. It's fine. I paid for it. Trisha said Jeffrey apologized to her over text. Jeffrey has apologized to me via text. I, I didn't choose to accept the apology. I still don't because it's not sincere because he continues to tell people that I'm on drugs and just a really gross that I don't know if Shane's telling him this stuff because I opened up to Shane about my sh Trisha also claimed Shane told Gabby Hanna about Trisha allegedly having herpes. As well, Trisha explained she just bought a house and had been renting her current home to save money. She ended her video by saying she wanted to move on and that Jeffrey and Shane will keep winning in life. Jeffrey's just a bad person, but he'll always, he'll keep winning in life. And I actually don't wish him any ill will, nor do I wish Shane any ill will. In fact, I know Shane's gonna do, so he has big projects coming up and he's probably gonna skyrocket too. He's super talented and I always wanted to be there for him because I knew, I know he's gonna make this amazing comeback. But the the Shane I have known for like twelve years has changed, and it's 
sucks. The next day, Jeffrey tweeted, Good morning to everyone except the guy that used to do my hair. Then, on January 19th, a new episode of Frenemies with Ethan Klein and Trisha dropped. Trisha spoke extensively about the situation and her history with Jeffrey and Shane. They referenced a video from a person named Tab. For context, in June 2020, Tab posted a video exposing some of Jeffrey's behavior. In his video, Tab doesn't mention Trisha by name, but he talks about the situation. They had continued to make fun of this person all day, talk about how bad their skin was, body shame them, talk about their weight, talk about their passion, talk about their recovery, just the most disgusting, horrible things. Tab said he defended Trisha. There was a moment where I had stood up and said, you know, I'm not cool with body shaming and I'm not cool with people talking about people's skin. And Jeffrey had told me, you know, don't worry about it. This person does this to themselves on the internet. So it's okay for us to do it. <sighs> The story Tab told in his video matches up with Trisha's version of events. Back to the podcast. Trisha claimed Jeffrey and his squad threw out her expensive Balenciaga bag, but later got a message from Jeffrey's makeup artist, Boomcack. All of a sudden, his makeup artist, Boomcack, who I don't know or anything like that, he texts me, oh babe, I have your Balenciaga. I've had it in my car for months. Like, can I, can I Uber it to you? And then I got the Balenciaga like two months later. She said Jeffrey treated Jay and Boomcack poorly. And they bully Jay. So I think that's where Jay's coming from. Really, because, they do? Oh, Oh, he would tell him to like move what speed, a, sit ugh. in the back. Like, ugh. yes, I remember one time he had Boomcack like fish out a french fry in his car. He's like, while we went in to eat, he's like, go look for that french fry I dropped. Like, just like really nasty. Trisha explained why she had skin problems around the time of the trip. I was on that binge, like, Jack on Hill's ex husband was out, and we did a bunch of drinks, and everyone saw it like online. I was just coming off of like a really high, like, binge oh. and like so my skin was like horrible and like I, I opened up Jeffrey days prior to this trip which is why he invited me on the trip she also said Jeffrey called her brave for getting sober he's like you're brave you're like getting sober Trisha claimed Jeffrey made up excuses for why she left early Jeffrey told everyone I was on drugs this kid Oscar he's like yeah she's on drugs we had to send her home but she was just doing too many drugs around us and we had to pay for the private jet because she was a danger to herself she said she told Jeffrey she wasn't going to be exciting during the trip he's like oh I don't party either because I told him I said I, I tell everybody I go to Vegas with I am not fun like anything I do I go to Donny and I like go eat and I go back to the hotel. That's my always my Vegas. I have logs of this. So he's like, no, 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 we're gonna be so chill. We're gonna just go see Gwen Stefani, meet her, and then that's it. We're coming home right away. It turned into a four day like club thing, and I'm like, I don't wanna go to the club. They had like a bunch of random people I didn't know. Trisha said Jeffrey and his friends made fun of Rich Lux behind his back. They made fun of him. He brought a gift to Jeffrey from Hermes for $400 and they laughed at it because it was the cheapest thing in the store. And Rich Lux just made a video like a couple days ago being like, he was trying to defend Jeffrey, and he's like, that was some up shit. She said Jeffrey joked about Trisha harming herself. They said some horrible shit about like to jump off and like myself outside of the Vegas balcony. They probably would be happy if I killed myself. Jeffrey is that person who would be like, haha, dumb die. She also clarified that she told Shane and Ryland about what happened shortly after the trip and that the trip took place after the conspiracy palette launched. Well, at the time he was like, what? Like he goes, oh my God, this is like scary. And like, it happened a couple times he would say this. He's like, this is like scary. Like, what do we do? He's like the mean girl. He's like a villain in this movie. Mm. And like, I, I don't know how we get away from him. Like that's mm. how Shane was saying. Trisha said she never asked Shane to not be friends with Jeffrey. But he's still getting money from the palette. You know, obviously Shane's not making videos so he's collecting money from the palette, whatever. And I, I, I understood that to a certain degree. And I've actually never even asked him to not be friends with him. But he and his words were like, we're gonna like distance ourselves or whatever. She also said Shane only messaged Trisha after she started talking about him. So he he texted me after all this, after, well, actually he didn't even text me after the Jay video. He only texted me when I started talking about him. Like the initial Jay video, which was the traumatizing thing, was where I expected him to call me, not after I mentioned his name. Because that Friday is when I was like hyperventilating. He didn't right. call me till Saturday. And it was only because I started like mentioning him and Rylan. Trisha brought up other things Shane said to her. But then other things like along the line of just, um, I thought you and Jeffrey could work it out and that was selfish of me and just like uh, I'm working on this in therapy Which is the exact same thing Jeffrey said to me, which was bullshit He's like I'm working on this through therapy and then two months later telling Oscar that I'm on drugs again And that like I bought a rose race to be him and that I'm pathetic and all this crazy shit. It's just like a manipulative and I felt really grossed out by it It was like the same thing when he told me don't make videos about Jeffrey or something like that She said Shane never returned the loyalty. She always gave him That's how loyal I am like if someone just makes a video about him I don't want association much less this is a person that like was like literally like I was like super over and he knew about this and he's like promoting him and like defending him and being and like publicly having him on the podcast for views for your <laughs> podcast to have 300,000 views you couldn't delete the last one with Jeffrey talking about Kanye and how it's an imaginary fucking thing like it was just so stupid I was like take the dump I told him the podcast thing was a big issue for me a lot take the 
fucking dumb podcast down. Trisha said she wasn't having a manic episode. And it, it wasn't a manic episode because the next day I woke up, I said, I don't even feel bad. Like, I felt like I did the right thing. It felt like a weight off my shoulder. Like, I was, I'm so done of like defending him. She said Shane spoke about Jeffrey being loyal to him, but Jeffrey never spoke up when Shane was getting canceled. In fact, not only did Jeffrey not defend you, Shane, but Oscar Wilde, well, I can say this again, because he he told me I could say his name. He's a DJ, and he was there with Jeffrey on the trip, and he was there in July, or in June. When Shane was getting canceled, Jeffrey said, oh, how do I cut ties with him? He's, like, ruining my brand. Ew. So he also talked shit about you. <laughs> what a he fuck. talked shit about everybody. I Trisha said she wasn't enemies with Shane. I'm not enemies. I really hope <laughs> Shane wakes up. And, like, honestly, like... Like I said, I don't want to cancel these people. Like for me, I've defended them so long that I just want to be not associated with them anymore because this is like really gross behavior. And I should have spoke up about Jeffrey sooner when Tab made the video. Tab was the original one. But I should have spoke up because it's not, you can't like treat people like sh Trisha said Jay texted her to apologize. I won't read the exact thing, but um, he goes, you know, since the first day I met you, it was nothing but positive energy. I hope we can move past so what it. Ethan and Trisha discussed why Jay acted the way he did. I believe him. It sounds like you guys did get along. Yeah. So my, my, my thought for you, hair by Jay, is to ask yourself why, under what influence did you turn so mean? And, and was it justified? You liked Trisha, oh, so right. why all of a sudden did you turn so mean? Like, who's influencing you to act like that? And act, just ask yourself if that's the kind of person you want to be. I think just seeing him, like, cower in front of Jeffrey and, like, the way Jeffrey treated him, I think he was just trying. You know how, like, bullies do. He just felt yeah. like... And he thought maybe this was his way to get in, like, Jeffrey's good graces I in agree. some way. I think it's a... He just was trying to be cool and... <sighs> he, and maybe he has like an obviously has anger issues. Trisha also explained why she blocked Shane and Ryland and who unfollowed Jay. Shane didn't unfollow him until yesterday, which is also why, like, why wouldn't you just unfollow him? Like, everyone's telling you to unfollow him. Jeffrey unfollowed him first, and then Shane and Ryland unfollowed. And did, you haven't talked to either of them since? I blocked everyone because I tried to talk to Shane, and it was like literally, it was like we were, like I said, on the way down Orange County, and I was like, like, it was like giving me like heart palpitations like i was like feeling whoo i'm gonna get like sick i had to block him ethan and trisha also discussed trisha becoming friends with shane ryland and jeffrey again do you think the fact that they all blocked him was like an olive branch of being like yo we want to we want to make this work we want to like make good with you and figure this out i don't think it's anything coming back from it i think they wanted to probably save face for mm. public people you know and his jeffrey's thing is always i want to keep this offline when he's because he did everything sh like sometimes i do want to keep but... it offline it's you it's a story of you being an asshole even asked if trisha could trust shane again let me ask you this is there a moment in the future where you could unblock shane and try to work it out because you guys did have such a nice friendship i trusted him with like more than stuff i told my family so it's like i don't think mm. i could trust him like that trisha said shane not wanting to believe her was triggering because when i was younger right. like i would my like, like teachers were like having sex with me and like no one believed me and i was like and i think from that, I became like a compulsive liar when I was like younger mm. because I was just like, oh, nobody believes me anyway. So I'll just like lie about everything. So I was like mm. lying about like stupid stuff. Like, oh, my dad's super rich. When asked if she was still a compulsive liar, Trisha said, oh, like you think I'm lying about this now? I, I no, I'm not lying about it. I just am asking because I know people are going to be like, she admits she's a pathological liar and you can't trust anything she says. Um, Like when I was younger, but I, I'm not now. I don't lie. I make a really conscious effort to I like, believe not, everything you say. Because lying got me in a lot of trouble, like really early on, like when my adult life, so I I had to stop. Ethan explained why he thought Shane didn't want to believe her. In my opinion, what happened is that he does always believe you, but in this case, he had this conflict of interest, you know, where he's making a load of money with this guy. He had this conflict going on in his head, and the only way he could rationalize continuing with Jeffrey is being like, oh, she's probably exaggerating or something like that. Trisha said she showed Shane the messages from the Vegas trip. Well, it's weird because I showed him the text messages from Vegas. Like, I let him read the text messages and of him being like, we threw your stuff in the trash. Like, he saw it like it was real. I mean, obviously made him believe that. But then, then in the same breath, he said, I was hoping you two would just like eventually make up. And I'm like, this is someone who like traumatized me, who like told me to like jump off a building, like all this crazy shit. And I'm like, you were hoping we'd make up? Like, that's so crazy. Ethan also brought up how Shane used Trisha's name in his palette with Jeffree Star Cosmetics. And then the most f***ed up thing is that on that palette, they have a Trisha Paytas palette. Well, a, a shade. Color. Of, yeah. What the f***? Did they ask your permission? <laughs> no, I mean, to me, it was more of like an honor because Shane was a huge deal at the time. I don't know. I thought that was really cool at the time. Trisha said she thought Shane had changed with the money from associating with Jeffrey. I would rather be homeless and I have been homeless by and rather than taking money from something that's dirty money. Then, on January 20th, Ryland uploaded an episode of his podcast, The Sip, with Ryland Adams and Lizzie Gordon. At the beginning of the episode, Ryland addressed the Trisha situation. 
He said he didn't support what Hair by Jay said in his Instagram Live and only met him once in passing. He also said his own involvement with the situation broke his heart. I love Trisha so much. Yeah. I consider her one of my closest friends. We see her more than I see really anyone. Rylan said he wished Trisha had come to them with what happened, which contradicts Trisha saying she told him and Shane what happened right after the trip. I truly wish she would have come to me as a friend if she was hurting like the way that she is mm -hmm. and talked it out with me. And I wish that it wouldn't have played out on the internet like this. I just am really honestly confused. He explained he was confused because he and Shane saw Trisha often and had even seen her after Jeffrey's appearance on the SIP. And I understand maybe it's hard for her to express her actual feelings towards Jeffrey to us or the mm -hmm. gravity in which she's feeling feelings towards Jeffrey when she knows we're specifically friendly with Jeffrey. So maybe it's hard for her to like ask me to cut him off. But at the same time, I just, I can't read someone's mind. Ryland said Trisha and Jeffrey were adults and he didn't want to interfere in their drama, but he still felt awful. I feel awful that I contributed to her feeling this way because she's obviously scared and hurting and doesn't want to be in the position she's in, I don't believe. He said he doesn't want to have drama on the internet and his friendship with Trisha means more to him than the internet. Ryland emphasized that Trisha's feelings are valid and said Shane reached out to her privately. He also said he wanted to take a step back from the drama before he reacted, a lesson he learned from the drama last year with Shane, Jeffrey, and Tati Westbrook. Likes, dislikes, and comments were quickly disabled, but some comments were posted before they were shut off. Most people were upset with Rylan's statements. She is upset because she's always come to Shane's defense through everything. You both, Shane and Rylan, have stayed silent and stayed friends with Jeffrey when, as a former Jeffrey stan, I cannot stand by that he chooses to have around. And Jeffrey helped me become who I am, unapologetic for who I am, but girl. Shane invalidated her feelings because he couldn't believe Jeffrey would say that, yet you're confused as to why she didn't come to you to express her feelings? This apology sounds like an apology I would make when I was a child and my parents would force me to apologize to someone and I'd say something bratty like, I'm sorry that you feel that way, lol. For me, this proves Trisha's point. You do not know what is going on. All she wants is for Shane and you to stick up for her like she has for Shane. I mean, she literally has defended Shane through everything, literally everything. I'm sure this will all be worked out, but Trisha's always had your guys back every step of the way. Ryland is acting like if Trisha had come to him and said, it hurts my feelings, you're still friends with Jeffrey, they would drop him. And to be honest, I find that hard to believe. Especially since Trisha said she did come to Shane with some stuff and he didn't believe her. Two friends got in an altercation a year ago. Can we not downplay the situation like it was a random fight? Jeffrey basically harassed and bullied Trisha to her face and behind her back. He's plainly an evil person who was awful to your friend. I don't even know how anyone can try to defend that and continue to support that behavior. Disgusting. Jeffrey talks badly about everyone and you and Shane are not exempt. The whole I'm not a mind reader argument frustrates me because you admit to her showing the text and explaining that Jeffrey is a toxic bully and your response is to remain friends with someone who hurt your good friend. Also, what makes you think Jeffrey won't turn on y'all like he seems to do with everyone on the internet? Learn who your real friends are and don't stick up for bullies. After Ryland's statement, Trisha posted a video titled Shane and Ryland are literal scum of the earth. Trisha called Ryland out for lying in his podcast. Like he threw shit out, I spent thousands of dollars with that, threw my shit out, like told people I was on this like, said there's a balcony jump when I was like, I'm so I was like, there, there's a balcony, just do it. And they, they knew all this, they knew all this. And so Ryland's straight up just lied, just so much bullshit in this podcast. She said Ryland lied when he said Trisha never came to him and Shane with her issues. Says I never, talk to them personally about it, which is such a lie on so many levels. My my sister was there like right after that all happened, like breaking down crying. They, they're just liars. They both told me like, oh my God, we're gonna distance ourselves from Jeffrey. And Ryan's like, yeah, I never really liked Jeffrey. Like he was always close to Shane. He never really talked to me and like, and Morgan too. They're so fake, so fake. But to be like, I don't even know why Trisha, I'm not mad at you. Like you guys are supposed to be like, this is supposed to be my best friends. Like Trisha criticized Shane's behavior as a friend. Like hindsight, I'm like so stupid. I'm so stupid. When I think about this friendship, I'm so stupid. And I'm the one person, one of his friends that like is so desperate. And I just wanted to like be liked by someone. And he like, 
he would give me the validation in a way a toxic boyfriend would, right? Like they string you along enough to like keep you happy and be like, hey, yes, I'm your friend, but also destroy you behind your back. And that's what I'm finding out now. She said she had proof Shane knew about Jeffrey's behavior. I have so many text messages I could show, like Shane and Jeffrey do everything in voice memo, but you can see my side of the text where I'm like breaking down everything that happened and Jeffrey's like apologizing. Trisha claimed Shane never went to her live shows. Never once did they, like I think about like my tours and stuff, they never, I had a tour, I had a show in Anaheim, my first show, well before Shane like hit with the series, the docu-series. Gigi came, like all my YouTube friends came. I had one in LA like a year and a half ago and he couldn't even come to that. And that was the same month that his conspiracy pal came up where he put a shadow named after me in it. And I guess that was supposed to be like some big honor. And like now I'm thinking like, hmm, hmm. <sighs> yeah, he didn't even come to my show. Anyways, just be friends. She claimed Shane fed her information on other YouTubers, hoping she would speak badly about them. And over the years he's always like fed me stuff right like he's always fed me things like stuff that I, I wouldn't know or care about but gets me like riled up like for instance stuff he said about Garrett and and Drew and um like Andrew like I don't know any of them but guess what like as soon as they, they became a group remember when they were all a group I was I was tossed to the side when like Garrett Ryland Morgan Drew and him were like me and Andrew were all making like you know haunted videos I was like I was tossed to the side like whatever I'm only around when like Shane falls and like, he's always feeding me stuff cause he knows I have a loud mouth and he knows I get riled up. And sometimes he'll even say like, oh, I, I, like, I don't, I shouldn't say this. I don't wanna like trigger you. Or like, I don't, I don't know. Like Trisha said Shane didn't reach out to her right away. And I told Shane when he did contact me on Saturday only he only contacted me after I started mentioning him and Ryland on TikTok. He did not count, call me after my initial J video that I was like upset and just about. He didn't care, he didn't give a fuck about just checking on me then. He cared after I meant, started mentioning Shane and Ryland on the TikToks. And then the next day he's like, I can't sleep, like my anxiety. Like just started really like manipulating me again and be like, I love you, I'm going through therapy. She said Shane told her Jeffrey was the only one who was loyal to him. And when I told him my issues, which was like them like, praising Jeffrey, him lying about his friendship with Jeffrey last year. And all of a sudden now he's like, he's the only one that was there for me. Of course he was the only one that was there for you. You both did really messed up. Honestly, really messed up. Trisha said Shane asked her to delete videos for him. Shane had, has had me take down multiple videos. Um, there was one with Trevor Moran. Like that's the only one that's still private for me is the one with Trevor. And he's like, I'm sorry, Chevy is his, is, is her name, so sorry. Um, but at the time when she was underage and it was um, like, and, and I just blindly deleted it. She called Ryland out for shifting the blame. That's what's so freaking crazy is Ryland just putting all the blame on me. Well, I don't think she ex could express herself right when she's talking about Jeff. It couldn't have been more clear and she no, it. Trisha said she takes the blame for her wrongdoings, but she was not to blame for the ending of her friendship with Shane. Yes, it's usually like a little bit, maybe it's like 15% that person, or it's always like a little bit, but with this, I can say without 100% certainty, this is the only friendship relationship that is ending solely because of them. She said her opinion of Jeffrey changed because of Shane. But when Shane started vouching for him, I was like, you know what? Let's not judge people based on their past behaviors. But it was nasty. It was, again, it was so nasty. Honestly, I should have just judged him. He is just as nasty now, if not nastier and gross and vile and like mean. Trisha explained her perspective on Jeffrey and Shane's relationship. They needed each other. Jeffrey's reputation was in the show. And Shane's docu-series was like making everyone look great. And Shane saw money and Jeffrey making all this money through pellets. And they were like, let's just use each other. And like, I get it, that's cool, whatever. I guess they became friends. She also revealed Shane told drama YouTuber Peter Mon that Trisha was a pathological liar when Peter told Shane he was planning on hanging out with her. He met up with Shane and he told Shane he's gonna meet up with me. Shane's like, well, she's a pathological liar. They like laughed about it. And this isn't the first time I've heard this. I've heard this from multiple of our YouTube friends that used to be, like think about all of our YouTube mutual friends, okay? Just think about it. They're very not problematic and I still talk to a lot of them and they've offered me support, but yeah. He said that to a lot of people, a lot of people. Trisha explained why Shane only communicates through voice memos. Like I said, most of it's like voice memo, it just sucks. Cause like, and Shane always did that for a reason. He was always, he was always paranoid people were gonna play. And I get it, I get it. Cause you know what? He's shady. You know what? I don't voice memo. I freaking text all of my sh It's like screenshot it. Like I don't, what do you have to hide? She said she felt dumb for blindly defending him for years. I feel so stupid 
blindly defending him last year too. You know, I didn't even see half the stuff. By Shane's mentality, that's what uh, Jeffrey didn't tell me. And you know what? I should have been more aware. Trisha said she spoke badly about James Charles because Shane would tell her things. He's really, he's really manipulative. Like I said, when he would tell me the stuff about James Charles, like I, I couldn't care less. I, I just didn't know anything about him, to be honest. It's not like I hated him. But he fed me so much stuff about him, but would like rile me up where I thought like I had to be the voice, right? Like I, I was the hair by Jay in this situation where I'm like, wow, I'm gonna be this, this tough, loud voice and I'm gonna speak on his behalf. And guess what? Shane doesn't get his hands dirty. I do. You know what I mean? And that's the same thing I just saw with Ryland. She revealed her true feelings about Ryland. I never really cared if I'm being completely honest. I've always thought he leached off Shane. The only reason people watch her channel is for Shane. Trisha said Shane never defended her when she went through her gender identity and mental health scandals. The very least he could have said is like, yeah, Trisha's like, talk to me about this or whatever. Because he talked to me about, he thought he was transgender when he was 24 and we had this conversation. The DID thing this year, you know, he was still making videos like, definitely could have been like, yeah, Trisha's also talked about like blacking out and like, you know, disassociating and stuff. She called Shane a hypocrite for saying he would not defend her because of his anxiety, but still defending others online. He does his bullshit, the internet gets me anxiety, but he's stood up for count tons of people that aren't his bestie. Tana during TanaCon, like when his friend, this girl friend of Ryland's had a movie out at some festival, he tweeted about it, doesn't tweet about my music videos, doesn't come to my show, like he's, he's, he's quietly, and he said this so specifically too, in the text, he's like, um, I've always supported you privately as a friend because the internet gives me anxiety. That's bullshit. That's so much bullshit. He likes the fact that the internet thinks of me as the crazy one, the person who doesn't is not validated because she's a troll. I mean, I'll take being a troll over being an actual evil, conniving, racist person. She said she had no ill will towards Shane and Ryland, but she took back all of the support she gave them over the years. I really really have no ill will and they thrive and they'll continue to thrive um that's just how it works sometimes people thrive and that's fine i'm not mad about it i'm not wishing they they get canceled over just my personal issues with them but i'll tell you what like this all happened to me privately for so long and i was manipulated for so long and i'm so sick of it and done of it i take back any support i ever gave I blindly defended him. That was so stupid. And I my, my cautionary tale is to stop defending people blindly. Look into stuff. And hey, if you need to cut a friendship or a relationship with someone, do it. Trisha and Ethan also addressed the updates on the following episode of Frenemies. Trisha called Ryland a weasel. Honestly, th there's nothing much to talk about. Ryland's a little weasel. They they are gonna get away with the shit. They're gonna glaze over it because they're rich and they'll keep being successful. And um, they lied. Ryland's a weasel. He lied. No one cares about your podcast. Turn off the comments. Silence your viewers. No one like that. It's gonna go down. Your podcast will be over. Soon. Trisha said she started getting audio of Shane talking badly about her. I started getting voice memos from people over the years of Shane talking to me, like his actual audio. I didn't put it out there because I thought it was kind of weird, but I oh, recapped what he yeah. said. And he basically like heard from Shane's, this is the first time I heard it because like Peter Mon said that he called me a soci, oh, he called me a sociopath, which what? Like- You're right, I saw that video. Not everyone's a sociopath, Shane, just because you had a fake therapist on your series that was whatever. Trisha called Shane and Ryland snakes. Shane, however, is a little two-faced snake. Ryland is also a little two-faced snake. And I don't, you know, honestly would rather be best friends with Jeffrey than have to see them ever. She called out Shane for saying he's an empath. You can't call yourself an empath. That's like saying I'm a good person. Like you, you just, you can't just say that. You're obviously not if you have to say that you are. Trisha also called out Ryland for saying she had problems expressing herself. When have I ever had a problem expressing myself to anyone? I'm expressing myself right now, like I did to you. You're a little weasel. She said Ryland was being a hypocrite. He erased the first episode of The Sip because the first episode is all about how he wasn't friends with Lizzie, his co-host, because she was friends with someone that was mean that he didn't like, that he thought was toxic. Oh. He's like, I didn't want to stay friends with you, so for four years we didn't talk because you stayed friends with this person. Ethan called Ryland out for saying he supported Trisha over Jay. Okay, so notice this I've is a really heard. illuminating comment. I support Trisha over here by Jay, not Jeffrey. Jeffrey said to yeah, it, the whole the whole issue is Jeffrey. It's like wow, bold stance to make. But my whole issue had nothing to even do with Jay. I'm just like, oh, he confirmed what Jeffrey was saying. Yeah. Trisha continued calling out Shane and Ryland for lying. Every time they hung out with me, my birthday, Shane's birthday, all throughout the summer when Shane was getting canceled, they came to my house, and all I kept saying is how Jeffrey sucked and how I'm so.
like ups, like upset by it. Like, how are you guys still friends? But I, I didn't even judge them for being friends. I was like, okay, they need to get the coin or whatever because they're not gonna make videos anymore. And I was like, I wasn't even judging. But like the fact that he's like, she should have come to us. And then when Shane texted me about it, I came to him and he's like, well, let's just forget it happened. Let's just, I don't believe you. What the f do you want from me? She said, Rylan talked about Jeffrey behind his back. And for the record, <clears throat> Rylan was like, oh yeah, Jeffrey's mean to me and Morgan. She doesn't give a f about us. Like he, she, or he only likes Shane and like, it's true. Trisha also said she wasn't really close to Rylan. I mean, for the record, I really didn't talk to him that much. I talked to him, I talked to Shane. She said she was going to be the officiant at Shane and Rylan's wedding before the drama. Talk they asked to me to marry them. Me, like, and, and they talked I about it on his it. podcast. Like, I was supposed to marry them. Like, I was like that oh close to them. They asked me last year, like, this is insane to me. This is insane. This, and then obviously all the spiral of him talking about me throughout the year. Trisha and Ethan criticized Ryland, claiming he didn't know what had happened and claiming Trisha didn't know how to express herself. It's super condescending, the whole thing. I was literally like gonna let it go until I saw this and I was like, this is someone who's supposedly my best friend, all this stuff like that. How, like he knows all this stuff, like he's so fake. The fakeness is like insane to me. She responded to Rylan saying it was hard for her to ask him and Shane to not be friends with Jeffrey. What am I supposed yeah. to say? Don't be friends with him. Yeah. yeah, it's so crazy. But me, I freaking, if they don't like someone, I blindly cut that person out of my life. But they know on so much detail. And then they also, Shane saying, I'm scared of Jeffrey. Rylan saying, yeah, Jeffrey's not nice. And then defend, like, I'm just in shock. But not only did they, they didn't have to throw Jeffrey under the bus to defend me. You know what right. I'm saying? Trisha pointed out the difference between who apologized to her and who didn't. Like, Jeffrey starred has tried to apologize to me like a couple times throughout the past year, right? And I don't accept it because I heard he continued to talk. But, but regardless, he did try to apologize, which is more than Rylan or Shane. They never apologized. They were always like, well, I wish you would have come to us. I wish you would have never once said, I'm so sorry. The like, it's insane. It's so insane. And even here by Jay, this like crazy person was like texting me. was like, hey, I apologize. Then on January 28th, Jeffree Star uploaded a video titled, I got canceled again. So I had a $200,000 shopping spree. Despite the title, Jeffrey does not reference the ongoing drama with Trisha and Hair by Jay, and instead shows his new Louis Vuitton items. However, on February 20th, Hair by Jay posted a photo of himself with Jeffrey on his Instagram story with the caption, hashtag fired. Trisha responded, So everyone's been tagging me in this about Jeffrey still using Hair by Jay. Obviously he is. Jeffrey's the one who said all those vile things. Jay was just stupid enough to repeat and confirm it on line because he's his little minion but jeffrey is also just as vile so obviously trash is going to keep trash he was just trying to save face for a couple days i guess and these are the people that shannon ryland continue to support for that dollar right? merch using jeffrey's merch company but okay cool trash recognized trash double plays with double cool the most offensive part about jay's rant was him saying if we if we him including himself and Jeffrey, you're the hired help, don't forget. But he said if we called her, saying him and Jeffrey called me, that I'd be dying to hang out with them. And Jeffrey called and pleaded trying to keep some sort of friendship or some sort of like cool relationship online. I would never hang out with these two people again if you paid me a million dollars. They're the trash scum of the internet and it's been proven time and time again, but because they're popular, they get away with it. And because they have money, money doesn't buy happiness. They're cold and dark on the inside. That seems to be the end of the situation for now. This is an extremely messy situation. It's hard to tell who is telling the truth and who isn't, although Tab and Trisha did have similar stories of the Las Vegas trip. While this situation could have been handled better offline, it's easy to understand why Trisha felt she had to tell her side of the story, especially after Hair by Jay's aggressive and threatening Instagram Live. We'll never know the full story behind what happened, especially because Jeffrey has not explained his side, and Ryland presented a drastically different version of what happened. Hopefully, all sides can work out the conflict offline. What do you think about this story? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button. To keep up on all the tea, consider subscribing to the channel.